everybody for being here. Uh, really awesome to be talking with folks in person. As I was just saying a second ago, this is the first time for me talking to a group of more than half a dozen people in real life in a real long time. Um, it's a little weird, to be honest. It's a little weird. Uh, it's great to be here. I love talking about this stuff, it's something that I'm really passionate about, something I spend a lot of time talking about and working on. Uh, both with clients and our team. Uh, my name is Justin Tupin, the CEO and founder at Atten Design Group. We're a strategy design development company, a digital agency that basically does everything involved in planning, designing, building, maintaining, helping grow uh, digital platforms, websites, web applications, mostly for clients with .gov org in .edu domains, and mostly, almost exclusively, uh, using Drupal. Been using Drupal for a little while, um, kind of a long while now, since 2006, 16 years, which is pretty crazy, uh, since version 4.6, which was a long time ago, and as y'all may know directly and certainly can imagine, things have changed a lot over the last 16 years. Um, there are three things I just want to touch on real quick that are still important today and things that drew us to Drupal uh, back then and continue to be real important now. First, of course, is just the incredible community that makes all this possible, literally makes this possible, makes Drupal possible. It's been just so awesome to be involved in that over the last 16 years or so. Um, second is the flexibility of Drupal. This was a huge draw to us back then and continues to uh, be super important for us, the sheer flexibility of the product. I maintain a few models. Um, Layout paragraphs have been a big focus of mine lately. It's really interesting just to see all the different ways people just use that, let alone Drupal at large. Uh, third, though, is, is the way Drupal works with content. And for us, most of our clients, uh, publishing content is their core mission. That is, that's literally what we exist to help them do. It makes Drupal a really great fit for those kinds of organizations. Drupal makes it uh, it's just so such a powerful content management system. It makes it easy to migrate content in, migrate content out, uh, publish across a broad spectrum of contexts to different apps, etc. Uh, it is still just a really powerful content management system. I think, you know, having said all that, one thing that is an opinion of, of mine is that while Drupal is so powerful as a content management system, one area where it has lagged a little bit against competitors is in the way we expect users to actually add content to your site and authoring experience. I know there's a lot of really interesting work that's happening right now in this space. It's really cool to see uh, some of what's happening with like admin themes um, and just some of the, the other authoring experience work that other folks are doing. Um, we've been really passionate about this, about this whole issue of authoring experience, about making it easier for organizations, for marketers, um, for folks that care about content, for editorial teams to add content to their sites without having to constantly go back to developers when it's you know something a little bit different maybe than the page that they added before. So that's that's kind of the theme of what we're going to be talking about today, specifically in the context of layout paragraphs, which is a Drupal.org module. We are going to kind of dive into the weeds and um, show how this thing works, and hopefully show you all how you can how you can use it, how you can uh, download it and put the ground running. So what we will cover specifically first is just a quick overview of layout paragraphs and what it is, why we've gone this route versus some other uh, possibilities or why we're kind of investing in this. Second, I'm going to cover current status and adoption. This is a Drupal by work model. So we're just kind of looking where that is right now. I will demo the module on our website, atten.io. Um, there are a number of customizations on top of layout paragraphs that you'll see on, on this part of the demo also. Um, those are all wrapped up in a product we've been calling Mercury Editor. So if that's something that kind of sits on top of layout paragraphs, and it'll be a little, I, I imagine there'll be some questions around like, oh, is this how layout paragraphs works out of the box? We can certainly get to that. I'm also going to do a demo of layout paragraphs installed on a fresh Drupal 9 site so you can see exactly what that looks like and what it takes to get it running. Um, and then we'll look at you further in the weeds and that that needs to show what it takes. It shouldn't take long. I mean, it, this, this stuff is, it's a, at the end of the day, it's a pretty simple module, um, uh, pretty easy to install and easy to get, get working, hopefully. Uh, 
Are you going to have time for questions and time for a conversation? So we can forward to that. Uh, real quick, some prereqs. Um, not required, but just stuff that, it, you know, this, these concepts will make it a little easier to understand what's going on first. Some experiences in Drupal. Of course, uh, being here, that would be helpful. Um, experience with the paragraphs module. So layout paragraphs does sit right on top of or is installed with the paragraphs module. So that will be useful to know. Um, experience configuring content types and fields. Working with users, roles, and permissions. And I think that's about it. So if you're comfortable with Drupal site building, admin, uh, you should be should be good. All right, so let's dive in with why layout paragraphs. As I said a minute ago, well, actually, before I get to structured contents, we wanted expressive drag and drop content authoring. And specifically, what we wanted was a system or a tool that targets marketers and editorial staff, not site builders, not developers. Um, we wanted to make it really easy for people that work with content to flexibly create lots of different pages, marketing pages, uh, you know, quickly create visual long form content. We wanted to do that without sacrificing structured content, going back to uh, one of, in, in my view, one of the things that's so attractive and powerful about Drupal is how well it handles structured content. So we want this expressive offering without sacrificing structured content. We also wanted to stay within the normal workflow of fields, field widgets, field formatters, so basically work with tools that site builders are already familiar with. In an ideal world, we didn't want to require migration. Now, you, you can migrate because layout paragraphs requires paragraphs. You can migrate content into paragraphs and then use layout paragraphs to manage those paragraphs, but it doesn't require migration. You can install it right on top of a website already using paragraphs. And then finally, and this shows up in particular in the 2x version of the module, um, it was important to us to provide APIs for continuing to push the author experience. And that kind of shows up in some of what I'll show on our site um, with some of the, the enhancements that are on top of the other paragraphs. But this is basically kind of uh, why we have been investing in the other paragraphs. Again, this is a module on Drupal.org. Check it out at Drupal.org slash project slash layout paragraphs. Um, I mean, we'd love to see more folks, of course, using the module. Love to see more folks involved in the issue queue. The issue queue is pretty active. I am the maintainer of the module, so you'll see me all over that. Um, there are a couple of releases. If you're looking for something to just install and go with a real high level of confidence, I, I hesitate to say this, and I'll start one in a second, but uh, there has been a stable 1.0.0 release for quite a while. You can certainly just download that and go. There is a complete rewrite which is the 2x branch, not officially tagged stable. Although we are using 2x for production, there is a stable release eminent, and we want a little bit more automated test coverage for the 2x branch. And I should say on the 1x branch, there's no automated test coverage. So we're relying fully on incident reports, on bug reports, on issues uh, from the community, from folks who are using it. Um, with 2x, there's test coverage for most of the use cases in the module, which is a, a huge step forward for that. There's a ton of other improvements with the 2x branch. Uh, the upgrade path should be pretty, pretty simple to pretty clean. There's no, um, I mean, it runs an upgrade hook for one very specific feature that most, most people aren't using. This. Adoption continues to grow. We are just shy of 3,000 users according to the first group of our board, so uh, give or take, uh, which has been really cool to see and about a fifth of those on the 2x branch, which has been great as well. Um, the issue too is active, but I, you know, it's, we're, we're seeing fewer and fewer real uh, blocking bug reports, uh, but there are a lot of folks uh, in the issue queue with feature requests and et cetera. Yeah? What's not typical? Yeah, that's funny. We were just talking about that. That's, it, that's about holiday season. Oh, is, okay. that's, at least that's what we believe that is, and a lot of these stats are probably driven by uh, dev sites, dev instances, they drop off over that time period. That's my guess. Trash says Joe's guess. We were just talking about this the other day. Joe, Joe mentioned that. Okay, great. So that's um, that's it as far as background. And I'm going to do a couple demos. So I'll start with our production live website. That's a good idea, right? Yeah. I didn't have the library installed just to make it feel better. Ah, okay. 
I feel a little better. <laughs> Just a little better. It's so easy. It's so easy. Um, well, that's good. You can't pull anything in, sir. Yeah, right. Totally. Um, okay, great. So I'm going to use our website as an example. I, this is a Drupal 9 website. I'm logged in as an admin user. I'm going to create some content but not publish it. Um, I'll just go over to the content tab. See how this internet connection goes. I'm, no, it's not too bad. I'm used to doing this over Zoom. Zoom seems to kill, um, really slow down any other app connection that going on. So I'll create new content. Case studies are a really great example of the uh, kind of work, or rather the kind of content that we want to support for us. Case studies typically vary a little bit from one page to the next, or from one case study to the next. We use a slightly different structure, and we want to be able to use kind of what we would call expressive storytelling, um, break things up a little bit through the page. I will do some things that already are pre-filled, so I'll use folder as an example. I'll skip down to the bottom. Since layout paragraphs is just a field format or a field widget at the end of the day, it works seamlessly with content moderation and workflow. So we're going to leave this as an idea, which means then we'll work close to publishing. Great, so I've created this case study but I have not yet created any content. Now, this is just the name of the paragraph reference field. And in a minute, I'm going to get into exactly how to set this up. A few minutes. But that's, this message changes based on what the name of that field is. And you can further customize it with the template. So it's all, all that's changeable. But it basically it says, you got a blank page, get started. So I start creating content. Um, we have a single option to add a section. Again, this is with some UI enhancements that are on top of layout paragraphs. We can choose what kind of layout we want to add for our section. I'm going to leave that as a one column. Let's save. Let's drop this one column layout right into the page here. We have this option inside the single region of our single region or single column layout. Go ahead. Uh, are those enhancements available also to download, or are those kind of things you pay for? It's a great question, and it's kind of a mix. Um, I, I'm going to show a slide at the end. I'm actually doing a webinar on Wednesday, back from Zoom, about this. Um, so some of this requires some customization per site. So right now it is a service, but all the modules being used, all the modules are available on Drupal.org. So you can certainly replicate it, and you know, at a webinar I'm doing next Wednesday, I'll go over kind of what the recipe is, um, and then of course this has all of the normal hook alter capabilities, so you can patch into it and do make your own customizations as well. And well, I'll show also like most of what we're looking at right now is coming straight from layout paragraph. So you install it, this is what you'll get. Um, and the plus button, and this is just the all. We call these components in layout paragraphs. It's really just paragraphs, paragraph types. So it shows little paragraph types. The one, like, the most complicated paragraph we have is this thing called a mass head, which actually has a bunch of fields in it. So I'll fill these out. I've obviously used this one as an example a few times before. Um, integrates with media libraries. So I'll look for just folder images. Grab a couple. Keep scrolling the place. I'll jump a little bit, but let's rearrange these. Let's, why not? Um, I'll leave the links as they are. Like this is where I would you know, link to the website and change the title or whatever. So it's saying it drops the content right in the page. Pretty close representation of what I'm going to get. Um, this is looking pretty good, but we do have some custom style options we can patch into. So we just hit edit. We go over to the styles tab. It lists the styles. We can change whether we're targeting styles to the layout versus the individual region. That becomes more interesting when you're dealing with a multi-column layout, if you will, in a second. Um, I'm just going to grab a couple of predefined styles up. This is being provided by a module called Style Options. And all of the options are completely customizable with YAML configuration files to, the, to your needs. So it doesn't come with anything pre-filled. This is all, all defined specifically for our site. And at the end of the day, it's essentially just adding attributes, um, usually classes. Uh, sometimes, I mean, in the case of the background color, it will be an actual attribute. Um, okay. So we'll choose the background color, light on dark, and we can again see that those changes immediately take effect. I'm going to cruise down through here and add, yeah, we're doing great on time. Yeah, 
I'm going to add a few sections just so y'all get a sense of the kind of the full capabilities. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. Let's go back to view. There's a recent push with the Mercury piece. It's caused some of these bugs to get really jumpy sometimes. Okay, great. So we'll go in here. I'm going to add a three column. Save. Um, so I'm going to actually copy and paste some text. So bear with me while I grab some text, because I am... Um, while you're doing that, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, please. Is there the ability, uh, specifically with that list of things that you could choose, uh, like mass signals, is there an option to create um, accordion pieces, like where you put uh, a paragraph inside of an accordion piece that you can play up and down, and so forth and so forth? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So those are all just paragraph types. So you would create an accordion paragraph type, which we've actually done. Um, and then, I mean, usually you'd have like an, an accordion paragraph type, and then that in turn would have accordion items as a paragraph type within it. And so you, that, that's a, kind of a typical way we might handle accordions. Okay. Um, yes. So the short answer is yes. And there's a few other ways. There's a couple ways you could, okay. could construct that. Yes. So, all right. Let's grab some more text over here. One thing you'll notice, and this is actually coming from that Mercury thing I was talking about. When you add a new text item, it immediately opens the WYSIWYG in the page. That's that's not the way that uh, paragraphs works by default. Um, but I think a pretty fun enhancement available through Mercury. Let's see here. Oh, look, that's not what I wanted. So again, we'll add some text. There you go. Shift so that all here. Mark up a bit. Okay, great. So that's, uh, again, just placing that, or placing that text in. All of these are draggable, so once you've uh, created your content, you can drag this around, you can play with it. Again, really get a, a clear representation of what you're working with. This, I think, would look better as a two column, so we can go back into our section and go down to two columns. Um, it'll actually, it'll ask us what we want to do. So since we're moving from three to two, there's content on the third, we've got to do something with that third piece. So we'll just tell it where we want to put the content from the third or the tertiary region. Hit save. Now those two paragraphs are together on the right there. We can add a little bit more formatting. Let's go in here and choose styles. The layout styles, we go over that primary region. So now this is applying the primary region, which would be the leftmost region. Add some padding. Give it a background color. Let's save. And that's been a lot nicer. Okay, great. Um, all along the way, we can save this content. Save it for a big file. We can close the editor. Which we're now looking directly at the view tab. Um, does that all say? It does not. No, it does not. I, you know, it's funny. In an early iteration of, of Mercury, which again with these customizations on top of layout paragraphs, we, we did have autosave, and it led to some pretty hefty um, growth in the database. So we pulled that out. Mm -hmm. Still looking at how to, how to best do that. Um, it's a cool idea, and. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, it's been five minutes. I mean, this is what this is what I like about this was a goal of the two X branch, and I think something that has been successful is um, adding that kind of functionality is certainly do doable. You can add it as just your own custom module or whatever to attach this. Sorry, I have one with the list of but what's Mercury? So Mercury is a is a collection of modules that's some customizations that can, that we've been basically a product of ours that we've been extending to clients. Um, the the modules that are in Mercury are available on Drupal.org. Yeah. I'm going to talk about that in the webinar next week. Yeah. Um, and in a minute, when we look at like a vanilla Drupal 9 website with layout paragraphs installed, it'll become clear kind of what's coming from those customizations and what's um, what's in layout paragraphs directly. That will be on uh, Wednesday. Uh, so on Wednesday, I'll talk about Mercury specifically, but in just a couple of minutes, I'll show what this looks like. Just like you know, with the Bardic theme right out of the box, with yeah. the side that spun up yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. yeah sure. Perfect. And most, so, yeah, even the, like, autosave isn't something that's available on Mercury, layout paragraphs, any of that, but there are hooks in layout paragraphs that will allow a developer to create something like autosave. So whether you want to attach your own library that does it with JavaScript, 
you probably want like a controller in there too uh, to handle the, the request, etc. Or just don't make any Alright, keep going here at another section. I'm going to go with the like, yellow background. Save. I'll grab the text first. styles or really just to add all kinds of customizations to layouts. And that's what we're packing into to provide the styles. So I go in, choose this custom style that I've defined, and it gives it this nice horizontal look. Um, there is this clone option, so if I want to make another section by writing this from scratch, it's going to really speed things up. Now that I'll still show this, so I can clone, that's been cloned. Let's change this background color to something else. Actually, CK Editor 5, um, which has worked mostly great. I mean, there's a couple, couple of weird things I haven't had a chance to look into the CK Editor 5. But CK Editor 5 is in Drupal core as of 9.3. Yeah, that's my problem. Um, and it's available as a control module for 9. Point, for 9, full stop. And uh, with this, this like front end editor thing. We're actually integrating with both CK Editor 4 and CK Editor 5. Um, but yeah, I really, I really like the, the features in CK Editor 5. It's definitely a big step forward. Okay, cool. So hope, again, hopefully you guys get the idea of how this works. Let's um, just maybe move some things around for a second. So you can hit up, that slides up, hit down, slides down. Each time it moves, it's sending a request to the server to actually reorder all these paragraphs. Um, for developers in the room who are familiar with paragraphs and familiar with some of the Performance challenges from paragraphs when nesting multiple references deep. We're not doing any of this. This is a single reference on a single node. All of these paragraphs are being stored as a single reference on a single node with metadata that describes the layout, which basically means you don't run into those performance problems. You don't have the same performance problems that um, you would have if you were doing like one container paragraph for your layout and then paragraphs within that. Uh, with those kind of crazy mess structures, which is what we used to have to do before we were using this, or something like this. We have one more section. Uh, we take just a quick break for any questions about anything we've seen so far, and then switch over to the Drupal 9 version, or rather the, the fresh install version. This is just mine also. Um, give this background color right to the beginning. dark. So, uh, all right, great. So now we've got a three column layout. Grab some text again. What's all those icons there when you're selecting a paragraph? Are those from the icon field when you're making your paragraph? That's exactly right. Yeah. So if you use that, so that's yeah. So if you add icons to your paragraph types, they will show up right there. Yep. Yeah, which is a pretty nice touch. Uh, let's add a slideshow. And then we'll just go into the media library here and narrow our results to folder. Yeah, and then it is. And the goal here, I mean, one thing we've, we've just you know, noticed so much of is, again, marketing and editorial staff. Folks who really care about content, for whom you know, content is their job, content is their, their passion, and what they really need to be able to work effectively with, efficiently with. Um, with some of the existing 
methods of doing things like creating slideshows or um, you know any kind of nested layout structure just requires so much abstract thinking that it, it really kind of just tracks the experience. And that's what we're trying to get around here and provide as much more visual, uh, much more visual feedback in the interface as far as what's, what's actually being built. Okay. I'm going to pause here. Any, any questions so far? Any other questions so far? Uh, what theme is this site using? Ooh, that's a good question. This is using just a custom theme. Um, custom theme for our website. This, and I'll, I'll show this. Um, this will hopefully make more sense here in a couple minutes. But there are a couple of ways you can use layout paragraphs. One is just as a field, which would be on the edit tab. So a field widget. The other is a field formatter, which would be on the view tab. So what I'm showing here, we're, we're looking at this as a field formatter. Um, so you're looking at that as a field formatter. And which in turn means whatever theme you have on the front end, it's just going to use that and give you a somewhat seamless looking feel. What does get a little tricky is if you, if you have a custom theme on your site, heavily customized front end, then you use the field formatter, you play edit, suddenly your forms look like garbage because maybe you didn't theme forms you, as a part of your front end theme. Um, and that's, some, that's another thing that with this whole mercury thing I've been talking about, that's another thing that we're trying to work on is just make those forms look good by default. Um, Unfortunately, some of what that takes is really prescriptive and probably doesn't belong in Drupal.org. Like, in, in, in my opinion, it just it's a little like um, it's a little too much, too specific. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. Well, so one of the questions that I'm thinking about is uh, on Super down, for example, when we're looking at the two column thing and then uh, I'm making sure that things like that are responsive. I find that the theme is in charge of doing that sort of thing, right? Uh, yes. Making sure that you have. The, the, uh, one of the problems we have on our sites is that the editor experience doesn't drive with the style sheet that the, the, the sites would use. So your experience when you look at it is very different. You've got the same that once you get published. Yeah. So that's the thing that's something that was important for us to try to figure out. So, are there any issues with that? Well, yes and no. I mean, um, Using the field formatter, what we're looking at right now, so again, we're on the edit tab, and we've hit, you know, if we hit edit, that, I'll just say this and close it real quick, so we can see what that's like. So this is just the view tab, and there's this edit link that appears if you have adequate permissions, and so now when you hit edit, it's actually removing that builder in the front end feed. Right. So in this context, this is going to look very, very similar to what your end users would see. And so you will get that, like, um, you'll see the responsive compatibility right here as you're creating content. The only challenge is you just have to make sure that your forms are also themed nicely with your front end theme, which and, and sometimes I mean just just for you know reasons of practicality, sometimes when we're doing site builds, forms might get skipped. Certainly admin forms might be get skipped in that front end theme. Um, just for sake of time. One thing that's kind of interesting, Jim is pretty aggressive in how it styles dialogues. So if you have Jim installed on your site and the Jim toolbar, that actually does a pretty good job of styling those dialogues. But there are still some, like, yeah, you just have to install it and kind of play with it and see because there's still some gaps. Um, yeah, kind of interesting. Sorry, what's installed? What's that? Uh, the Jim theme? So, I'm sorry, ask that again? Yeah. What's yeah, are you familiar with the Jim theme? So Jin is a, um, probably those here who can speak better this than I can, but G-I-N. It's a further enhancement. It's a further enhancement beyond Clara. I, I believe it's on top of it. Yeah. I think it is. I think Clara is the parent theme for, is that right? Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. So we have a lot of editors that it may be a little jarring if we move to this type of strategy versus the traditional Drupal editorial experience. Mm -hmm. I know this is much better as far as editorial experience, but there will probably be some that say this is better, but using, especially with existing content. What does, if you go into the edit screen here, are you able to also edit content in the edit? Yeah, great question. 
No. Okay. Uh, not on this one, actually. So, on, I mean, you can set it up to do that. On ours, the edit screen, so we've completely removed that content field, which is the paragraph reference field, from the edit screen. Um, I am going to show, I can see I'm going to show it, so i got to make sure I make new time for it. But I am going to show how what that would look like, again, on like a fresh install. Yeah. Yeah. You can have that layout paragraphs builder experience on the edit tab, just like what I was just showing. Um, from a theme perspective, that gets tricky too, because now you're looking at that content in the admin theme. Right. Unless, I mean, in this case, we're using the front end theme for, I mean, there's just so many options. We're using the front end theme for the edit tab. Um, so there, there's ways around all of that. But for us, you know, the edit tab is just all of the metadata. Yeah. And then we just, we only manage, when it comes to case studies, we only manage um, content on the view tab. Now, that's what we do for case studies. If I want to go to a blog post, like one of our articles, that's a very traditional, you know, single WYSIWYG field. Um, yeah, there's some cool stuff going on there with like Google Docs integration, totally different realm of author experience work though. It's not not this not what you're looking at here at all. So it's that you know, even on a single site, there are some types of content that warrant this kind of flexibility. There are some that do not. There are some that still just you just need a big text field, enter your text and go. Um, but if you're trying to empower Editorial staff and marketers, again, that's the, the kind of the primary audience for this. In my, in my opinion, if you're trying to empower those, those folks with tools to create really flexible, longer form, typically like pretty visual, any great images, slideshows, and not always in the same place. So you're not just filling out a form. Um, for that kind of flexibility, this, is, this really works well. Okay. And I guess, uh, sorry, no, it's not something. So we have a ton of pages, but it don't finish from that. Is it easy to migrate that content to paragraph layouts? Um, um, well, may, it depends on how it's set up, maybe. Okay. So yeah, the, these are just paragraphs. Yeah. So depending on how your content is structured, it may or may not be easy yeah. to, to migrate into paragraphs. So, okay. um, and it would do it, you would do that the same way you migrate Anything else in Drupal? Yeah, you would set up a migration. You do all your mappings, and you'd say like, this chunk goes into this kind of paragraph. This chunk goes into this kind of paragraph. You could set up if you want. You know, depending on how that content's stored, you could parse some of that out of those blob fields and into paragraph types. Um, but you know, so when we're doing big, when we're doing migrations, well, big or small, uh, moving from say D seven to D nine, we'll often create mappings from. You know those content types into paragraphs, yeah. um, just so we have a little more flexibility. Yeah, okay. so, but not, not always; it, it depends. One more thing we're doing it. No one's asked it yet, but this is um, a little different than layout builder, which is in core. Obviously, a little bit different. Layout builder is more of like a, in our view, is is a um, I mean, de facto layout and layout construction tool for site builders and developers. So really, I mean, that's, this is the way anymore, like we always use Layout Builder to set up uh, kind of templated layouts across the entire site to find what goes where on content type pages, et cetera. So we, have, we have a number of projects where we're using Layout Builder and Layout Paragraphs at the same time on the same page because Layout Builder is providing kind of the framework for that structure, that layout. Layout Paragraphs is really all about content. It's all about just this the content piece and empowering again authors to flexibly create content. So, so layout, layout paragraphs doesn't require layout builder? It does not. Uh -huh. no, it requires a layout API, which is in core anyways, and it's the same it's the same APIs that are used by layout builder, okay. but they're not it's not a requirement now. They're two different two very different systems. They're iOS and I mean you can use them together but they're Yeah. I think I think they are. I mean you can use Layout Builder to do a lot of what Layout Paragraphs does, and much more. I mean, Layout, layout Builder is, is um, wildly flexible and also pretty complicated, um, in, in my opinion. And you can also do some work to simplify that. But to be honest, a lot of the folks that we've talked to about Layout Paragraphs, they kind of come from a Layout Builder background. And they're like, man, we wish, we, we wish we'd seen this, or let's keep talking because we, we want this kind of simplicity for um, for our writing staff. So if you kind of play with the two side by side, you get a sense for that 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 whole idea that one is a site builder developer tool, the other paragraphs is an author's tool, that seems to really land with people once they play with, with both ones. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
All right, this is a brand new Drupal 9 website. We installed it yesterday. Um, there are two custom modules installed on this website. Or not custom, I'm sorry, contributor modules. Actually, maybe it's three. Um, but the only, the only two that were directly installed were layout paragraphs and a module called Stories, which is just a module that, that we maintain on Drupal.org, which is a collection of paragraph types to help folks create stories, to help folks create um, all kinds of flexible content. So that's the only two models that are on here. Stories, the reason I like using that for this demo is because it provides a bunch of paragraph types right out of the box. So I don't have to go in here and create paragraph types as a part of the demo. And once I turn on stories, I've got all these different paragraph types. So that's nice. That's cool. Okay, here's where I'm going to show you all how to actually get up and running the layout paragraphs. So I've got layout paragraphs installed, stories installed. You don't have to have stories installed. You do need to have some paragraph types. And again, that's why I install stories, to get those paragraph types. But even though I've got stories with all the paragraph types, we need to create a section paragraph type to assign that the layout structure to with paragraphs. So to do that, I'm just going to add a new paragraph type, call it section. Makes sense. Uh, and then to make that behave as a layout paragraph section, I'm just going to turn on the layout paragraphs behavior. That opens up these options for what columns do I want to support, or what uh, layouts do I want to support. These layouts come with Drupal core, so I, I'm just going to so go with those. started in a structure or appearance for this. What's that? You started in a structure or appearance for this. Uh, structure. Okay. Yep. So you're going to add in structure, paragraph types, oh, add a new paragraph type, <laughs> call it a section. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, all you have to do to make it act like a section is turn on this layout paragraph behavior which will be there if you have the layout various module installed. And then you choose the different layouts that you want to support, that you want to be available in your interface. So I'll just grab these. Drupal Core. So that ships with the layout API in Drupal Core. Um, you can define your own. If you just Google layout API Drupal, there's a lot of great documentation on how to do that. That gets pretty powerful, too. Um, the ones I was showing on our site, those are all custom layouts. Yeah. That's where you would control like how breakpoints work, attach your own styles. You can actually attach styles in a way that works both front end and back end because it will sit in a module. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of good stuff there. So, you know that. Um, save the section. No fields yet. Fine. We don't even need any fields. We're going to leave that alone. Go back to structure. Go to content types. Manage fields on basic page. I'm going to add a new field. I'm going to make it a paragraph field. Course. We'll call it content. That's what I call everything. We've got it on There's actually an issue open right now where um, cardinality is not respected by layout paragraphs. So that is, that's one issue that's out there. And the, the read, that wasn't really a use case when we we're building it. Like the idea is, we should be able to create add as many things as you want, but that needs to be fixed and isn't yet. Um, and that, that'll be fixed before the fixed stable release. Um, all right, to make this real simple, so this is a paragraph reference field. It's showing me all the possible paragraphs. I could choose the ones I want to include. I'm just going to hit exclude and then not check anything, which means I'll be able to add anything. So that just means all those paragraphs will be available on the field. We're able to manage form display, and this is this is the whole thing that makes it work. Under manage form display, we'll choose the layout paragraphs field widget, and under manage display, we'll choose the layout paragraphs field formatter. And that's it. Um, now to use layout paragraphs, we we'll go back to content. Add some new content, add a basic page. And to your question earlier, someone's question earlier, we're now seeing the create content page with the layout paragraphs interface in the, the actual edit context or the create context. So we can say test page, see a page, I think, session from people, row, test page. Um, skip the body field, go down to the content, and this is going to look real familiar. Again, it's not doesn't have like the styles applied, some of the customizations applied, but we have this whole list of paragraphs we can choose from. It's worth noting, 
I, I really like the, the UI um, of layout paragraphs. You can use layout paragraphs without layout if you wanted to. So we don't have, there's nothing forcing us to have this section uh, type. So I could just get started with, you know, I could throw a text um, paragraph in here. So, text, ah. And here's my paragraph that I can edit. I can drag it around. I mean, there's no, there's no layout, so I can't put it in a region, but I can drag it up and down. And it provides a nice interface, even for just working with paragraphs uh, without structure. But since we're talking about layout, let's go ahead and add a section. Again, this should look pretty familiar. This layout options is coming from Core's layout plugin. And again, you can write your own custom plugins and attach them to your layouts. Custom plugins, you can make forms that have whatever options you need. Um, it's a little, a little interesting. We'll make sure the three column layout. There's our layout. Again, looks really similar to what we were looking at before, so you all have an idea of um, it's tough to what you want to share a kind of a more polished version of this, but then it can be confusing as to what's available in layout paragraphs by default. It's still, still pretty polished by default. It provides a really nice interface. Um, and we can start, of course, adding items within here. Add a text item in our first column. Uh, all those drag and drop controls are available, so we can put that wherever we want. Add maybe an image in our middle. Um, yeah, so that's a quick look at how all that works. Now, there are a bunch of options that determine how this can be used. Um, I can say, you know, we can say, and you can see kind of what that looks like um, again by default. Let's see where we're at on time here. Oh. Getting really close, so let's let me just show a couple of the configuration options really quickly. So if I go under structure, back to content types, manage, uh, uh, do manage display. Under manage display, we're going to turn on that layout paragraph builder. Now we're, we're going to go manage that in the front end, and then I'm also just going to show over here on the right a few options. So you can. You can nest sections within sections with layout paragraphs, which is pretty interesting. Um, so we can say, okay, let's, let's allow nesting. Let's just allow nesting with one unique. Um, you can also choose to require paragraphs to be added inside a layout. So if you do that, you won't get that whole list initially. You'll only get section as an option. So we've added a section, and then you can add other paragraphs inside. So I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So if we save, go back to content. Go to our test page because we've enabled that field formatter. We now have the edit content tab. Um, because we are requiring content to be added into sections, we only can add a section it's right here, and then we can add you know whatever we want within the section. And because we're supporting nesting, you can add you know one section here, but then you can't add a section within there because that becomes one level too deep more than what we just specified. So that's how, somehow how that works. Um, you can also see what this looks like. I mean, uh, you, you can see the difference between styling on the front end, which is using the Bardic theme, versus styling on the back end. Oh, I guess I should save this. Um, versus styling on the back end, which is using the start seven, seven uh, theme. Um, it, going back again to, you know, it's going to pull whatever styles are loaded via the theme in the context it's running. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay. That's, um, that's about it. We've got about two minutes. <laughs> Although I think part of you have to go a little over. I know we answered some questions already. I'm happy to answer some more. So. Sorry. Can you show one more Sure. So there's a field uh, formatter. You go to structure, go to your content type. We're dealing with basic page, manage display, and under the format, layout paragraphs builder, which is marked as experimental, uh -oh. is available right there. 
um, layout paragraphs would render that collection of paragraphs in the correct layouts and would apply the correct formatting. Layout paragraphs builder also turns on the builder capability for people who have the correct permissions. Does that make sense? So we do that. Um, that experimental label will go away once we have full test coverage for the front end builder. So there's test coverage for the, the field widget. There is not yet automated test coverage for the formatter. Although the formatter is really just the widget rendered on the front end, so I have a very, I, you know, relatively high level of confidence in that regardless. Uh, but once we have automated coverage for the field formatter, then we'll ditch that. Label. If you manage the forms uh, and switch the paragraphs layout of the field setting back to the class of paragraph. Oh, yeah. What happens on the editorial last outside out? Um, it looks kind of bad. <laughs> okay, so you have to change this one back as well. So this... Oh, I'm... So I'm talking about... The, oh, we just threw this one. Yeah. That's a good question. I actually don't... I'm not sure I've ever done that. Um, so, okay, if we do this, the, the problem is that... And, and we have layout paragraphs installed. The problem is that... So layout paragraphs will correctly render um, a paragraph that's a container with the things that are inside of it, yeah. but then it'll get rendered again and again because it's just the, the paragraph. It's not like the paragraph's trying to render the paragraph once each time down the page. And then if it's a container, it's going to render it with all of its children. So it's just, it's just a mess. You wouldn't want to have that. You wouldn't want to have layout paragraphs, you know, managing a bunch of paragraphs and then go to a rendered entity. I'm not sure what happens if we change the uh, no, I'm in no way recommending it. I'm just kind of. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would recommend it actually. <laughs> but I'm curious. Uh, so that's the classic. Um, oh, shoot. Come on, man. Okay, so we just have the yeah, yeah, not that. There's no rhyme or reason on where these things are going to be going. Yeah, I mean, there's so, you know, it's actually listed, the, the order it saves these things in is if you think about, you know, um, the container is item zero, and the first one on the left is item one, the next one's item two, three, so it, there's a little rhyme or reason, but it's not, I mean, it, it's hard with, there may be situations where you need to, to back away from layout paragraphs and so you write a migration to kind of deal with this, and the structure is there to do that. It's hard to imagine a context where you've used the paragraphs for a bunch of content yeah. and then you just want to turn it off. But that would that would be yeah. that's like false. Yeah. 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 No, well, you go and turn it back on because I know to put it back. I think you'll put it yeah, I think you'll put it all back where it was. Because nothing's changed in the database. Yeah. It's the way it's saving all that data, I don't think it'll just be fine. So yeah. Pretty backup, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Do you use that story from modules for your client site? We do. Up here. Yeah, we do. Okay. And does that come with a theme for the paragraph? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, so we, but I'm, I'm actually not sure. So we maintain a theme called Prototype. It's on Twitter, by the way, but it's, as far as I know, we're the only ones using it. Like, it's just our starter kit for client projects. And I believe there might be some handling of stories so where it has Prototype. Prototype. But to be honest, I don't think, I think without having like your process built up around that, I don't think it can help you at all. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I was wondering how you did it internally if you used yeah. the storage module with the game game. We do, but it's all, you know, all of our stuff ends up being, uh, most of the things are so heavily customized and our build tools are so customized to like the way we're doing things or whatever that I'm not sure that would be that helpful. Hey, what should I have to do? You have a standard set of paragraph, um, paragraphs that you use. In addition to the story, uh, story so this, the standard ones we use when we're thinking about, yeah, so our standards would be stories. Okay. And then they're all, they're yeah. almost yeah. every yeah. side has exceptions, too. Um, one thing I like about layout paragraphs is because the layout is defined in, well, these, these sections, you can really simplify your paragraphs. So I, I like to provide, if, you know, if I'm, when I'm involved in, uh, Client work, which isn't that, that often, but what I, I like to provide the narrowest group, the smallest group of paragraphs possible, and the simplest collection of paragraphs possible. So, try to get away from, you know, we used to do like 
text with image paragraph or two text blobs, one image, or you know, and that's that's what this helps us get away from um, because that that's in that layout versus being in the. Oh, that's great! Yeah, glad to hear it. Yeah. Um, download it. I mean, if you want, and please, if you run into trouble on Drupal.org, um, open an issue. Open an issue just says, hey, I got lost. Can you help? I try to be really responsive there. Well, that was in the team. So we have site and tutorials and documentation. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't need it. You don't need it. It's so simple. It's so simple. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a media page. There's a little bit of documentation on Drupal.org. Um, that, okay. that part's. We get a lot of headway in other areas. You're using our articles, right? What's that? You didn't show it using it with articles, but you yeah, you can use it with articles. You can use it with any any content type, and that's that's okay, the thing. That was the goal was to make something that um, to make something that works just the regular old Drupal way. You know, it's just fields and fields and matters. I am going to talk next Wednesday. Hopefully, it's okay to throw this up in here. I'm going to talk about Mercury, and Mercury is just some customizations on top of layout paragraphs. Um, I, you know, it, it's based on all freely available modules. And I will show what those modules are and encourage folks to go download those modules. Um, we offer Mercury as like a service to clients and as a part of our build process with clients. And we're still trying to figure out the right way to release it, if we even release it, because it requires so many customizations and it feels so specific that it's just not, um, I, I, I don't see how we make that like a, a valuable contribution. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, if you're interested, come check that out. And um, yeah, a little more the project page. Feel free to email me directly, justin that and that I am. In the webinar, are you going to kind of show sort of how you build Mercury or the process of Mercury? Yeah, we'll show what the parts are of Mercury. Yep. So just show like there's a there's a just a, a small set of modules in addition to layout paragraphs that we kind of wrap together in Mercury. So we'll talk through how we built that, what the difference is between that and layout paragraphs. Hopefully, show some client work. Um, when we implement this for client projects, it's usually with that added step of, of Mercury. Um, it just adds a little more polish. Um, but I mean, a lot of folks. It's been really cool to see adoption of layout paragraphs. You know, uh, a lot of folks are using it, and in a lot of interesting ways too. I mean, one thing that we haven't done a whole lot of that I've been really excited to see others doing is using. Layout paragraphs in headless and decoupled implementations. Um, which, to be honest, I never even never really even thought about as a use case when we were first building this. Um, but there's, it's, it's always cool to like put something out there and see all the different ways people use it. So, any other questions? I got some. Oh. <laughs> uh, feel free to after too. Yeah. So, yeah, is there a presentation somewhere? Oh. To this presentation, yeah. I think it'll be on. It's going to take. I heard it was going to take a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that'll be on the conference website. I think it'll be there. Yeah. I think your slide before we have a link to you have a webinar section on your website will be there. Yes, we do. So if you want to see this webinar, um, go to our website slash webinars, and it'll, it'll be it'll be real similar to what we did today. Just also talking about Mercury, more specifically about Mercury. So, so are these slides also be available on your website? You know, no, I hadn't even thought about that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's an easy way to do that. You know what? If, if it's not too much trouble, just email me. I'll send them to you. I mean, small group, just Justin at atten.io. Happy to send you the slides. Um, yeah, and I'll just I'll make this available to so whoever has the link and send you a link. A couple of weeks. Yeah, no, no worries. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, and then, of course, the the, uh, the camp website is going to have presentations available at some point. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah.